Hey, my glam girls. Welcome back to my channel. It's Chelsea. And today we're talking about some hourglass products today. So I have the Ambient Lighting Edit Sculptured Palette. And I have the Ambient Lighting Edit Mini Sculptured Unlocked Palette. So I will be putting both of these palettes on my face. Of course, talking you through my application process, how the shades look and wear on my face, and then giving you my review as to who I feel these products will work for. I also have one other ambient lighting palette, so I will do some quick comparisons with that, and then we will be done. But before we get started into this video, I just wanna say thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend some time with me. If this is your first time here, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe to my channel and join the Glam Girl Squad. And if you are a returning subscriber, well, thank you so much for deciding to come back and support my channel with all of your likes and your comments. They all truly do mean a lot to me. So let's get into this video. Outfit of the day. Okay, so this little number is from Target. I think it is so, so cute. I don't like to iron my clothes, so forgive the wrinkles. <laughs> um, but I really, really like this dress. It is um right above the knee it has pockets very comfy it has an underlining skirt so the underlining skirt is a little more form-fitting than the top cover of the dress but it's just a really cute little number this is a size medium and i am about a size 10 for reference my necklace is also from the style collection and of course i will link both of these products down below if you are interested in checking them out okay on to what you are really here for. So we have the Hourglass Sculpture Collection. Here is a look at the palette if you have not seen it before. And when I saw pictures of this palette, I said, hmm, okay, this might be something that we could work with, okay? And then this is the Mini Ambient Lighting Palette. And so I was really excited when I saw this mini size come out because I'm going to be really transparent, no judgment here. When this palette first came out, I bought the palette, but I really only used two out of the six shades in the palette. So I ended up taking it back. I had it for a little bit of time and I was like, you know what? I'm not really using this palette like I should be using it. And I really only wanted about two of the shades. So when I saw this many size, the two shades that I really used a lot are in this palette along with, you know, the couple other shades. So I was really excited to get this one because I was like, I already know I like two of the shades and the other two shades, like I can get used out of them versus feeling like I'm wasting a whole palette based on the cost. So the Ambient Lighting Edit Sculptured Palette retails for $80. This is currently being sold on Hourglass's website and also at Sephora. It's going to be described as the anticipated Ambient Lighting Edit returns with three best-selling shades and three exclusive new shades of blush, bronzer, and highlighter. And this is limited edition, so this whole entire collection is going to be limited edition. This particular palette is going to be what Hourglass calls its cult favorite, and it is returning as a curated quad with four shades to layer and blend from multi-dimensional radiance. In its third year, the best-selling palette features an edited selection of ambient finishing powder, blush bronzer, and a metallic strobe powder in a striking gold compact with architectural facets. It does retail for $58. And from my understanding, it's not available at Sephora just yet, but I would think it's going to come to Sephora um, simply because this particular palette is already at Sephora. The three repeat shades that are going to be these two ambient lighting powders here and this blush called Mood Exposure. You can buy all three of these particular uh, products separately. And then the new shades are gonna be this highlighter, this blush, and this bronzer. All right, so let's get into demo and application. Let us start with the newest kid on the block. We're gonna start with this one. I'm going to start off with bronzer. I have already applied foundation, concealer, powder in my T-zone, eyeshadow brows. So I'm ready to apply my bronzer. Going in with a Bristles Beauty F09 RM brush. We're gonna start off with the bronzer. And the bronzer is the shade that I am most curious about because when I saw it, I said, okay, this looks a little deeper. Now we know Hourglass can do a whole lot better, but this is looking a little deeper. And let's just start. Okay, I see a little something here. Okay. Oh, we got a little something going on here. Oh, well, <laughs> right. Um, I am wearing the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation, um, and I wear the shade Natural Amber, if you are looking for a reference. I also do list in the description box my foundation shades for 
other common shades of foundations. If you are interested in trying to, you know, see if these powders will show up on your complexion. So I am really liking this bronzer. I like the tone of this bronzer too. It's a nice neutral bronze. Kind of has, if I, kind of has like a rosy tint to it. Do y'all see that? Let me know if you see it. But I'm really, really liking this. Of course, it's blending out really beautifully. Um, hourglass powders never disappoint with that. Now I'm gonna go into the Unlocked palette and we're going to apply this bronzer as well. Okay, going in with the same brush, just wiped it off. Now, just off of, you know, looking at the bronzers, the bronzer in the Unlocked palette does have some shimmer to it, whereas the bronzer that I just applied from the um, Ambient Lighting palette was a matte bronzer. And upon application, this bronzer is definitely not as deep as the bronzer from the Ambient Lighting Palette. Um, we do see that I have a little bit of color, but I'm definitely needing to build this bronzer up to show a little more, but it's working. I mean, it's, it is definitely showing up. I do like that this bronzer is more, a little more noticeable than this one is. I also like that this bronzer is matte. Now, I will say this, with this one being shimmery or having some shimmer to it, it is not overly done. Let me get it a little closer. It's not overly done and I don't feel like um, it looks like glitter sparkles on my face. So that's good. Um, I don't, you know, I don't feel like, especially from afar, it even looks like I have a shimmery bronzer. It just looks nice and um, glowy on the skin. So let's go in with Mood Exposure right here. And I'm going to place that on the, the higher portion of my cheek. And this is a nice, like beautiful mauve toned blush, but it's not like overly mauve -y. So I do think it would be complimentary for a range of skin tones. Oh shoot, I put this on the wrong side. <sighs> Okay, we'll just go with it. We will just go with it. How about this? I'll put it on both sides since there's only one blush in the Unlocked palette. Okay, we saved it. We saved it. <laughs> this is pretty. This is a really pretty blush shade. I do like this. Subtle, not overly done, but really pretty. Okay, now let's go in with this new blush shade right here. And I'm just gonna flip the brush over and I'm gonna concentrate this more on the apples of my cheeks. Oh, that's pretty. I like this. Oh, that's pretty. Ooh, y'all know I like me a good glowy blush. Wiped off my blush brush. This is the Wayne Goss 10 brush. So now going in with the Unlocked palette and going in with this blush shade. And this was the shades that, this was one of the shades in the previous palette that I really, really did like. And this is pretty, very complimentary to mood exposure. You can see a slight difference in the two. Um, I feel like this particular shade is just a little lighter um, than mood exposure. We gotta add a highlight. Because I have the unlocked one in my hand, we'll go with that. Going in with this metallic strobe highlighter here, and this is the Wayne Goss Medium Brush. Excuse me if you hear any Excuse me if you hear any banging or knocking. We are putting in cabinet doors, finally. We've been without cabinet doors in our kitchen for well over two months now. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. And I remember this this highlighter coming, coming to play and she's cute. Okay, just flipping over the brush and using the same brush, going in with this highlighter shade right here. So this highlighter right here from the Ambient Lighting Palette, it is described as a strobe powder. So this is the Glistening Strobe Light, one of their newer highlighters. And from the Unlocked Palette, this is what they call as their Metallic Strobe Powder in Champagne Strobe Light. And that's this highlighter right here. And honestly, I really, really like both. I feel like both have, they both are gold-based. 
and I feel like they both have like a slight difference, but there's, it, I feel like both highlighters are in the same family. In like a gold, golden champagne type of highlighter. I really, really like both of them. What do you guys think so far? Okay, and then because how could we end this video and not apply some ambient lighting powders? So I'm gonna go in with Soft Light from the Unlocked palette. I've already placed my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Powder under my eyes, shade medium. And I think these powders are really beautiful. They definitely allow for light to just bounce off the face. Um, and one of the places where I really noticed that these powders, like where I really saw the difference that they made was when I went to work. And you know like when you're in the bathroom sometimes at work or just in areas where they've got that weird kind of green lighting and you like try to take a selfie or you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're just like, why do I look like an alien? <laughs> like you just look really weird. I remember one day going in the bathroom and realizing like, oh wow, I look like myself. Wow. And realizing like, wow, these ambient lighting powders really do allow light to bounce off and really allow for light to hit the face at an angle where it's really complimentary to you and you don't look really off and weird. Then I can use diffuse light. So I'll show you what diffuse light looks like. Taking the same brush, this is the Wayne Goss airbrush brush. So just taking that and placing it under the eye. And they're very subtle. I mean, none of these powders, in my opinion, really leave any type of cast or like, they're so finely milled that it's really hard for the powder to like, even be present or detectable on the skin. So even though these powders might look light in the pan, they're not gonna look like that on the face, which I think is why, it's one of the reasons why these powders are just so much, they're so adored because they just look flawless on the skin. And so as you can see, um, and hopefully you can see it, I feel like this side looks brighter under the eye than this side does. And I'm looking at it in the mirror. It's slight, it's not like too harsh, but it's just a little lighter. So based on how you like your under eye to look, how bright you like your under eye to look, would depend on which you know powder you would like to use. And then just to show you um, dim light all over the face, I'm gonna take my big old fluffy brush. This is my BK Beauty 102 brush. This is the brush that I usually use to set my face with powder and just kind of buff everything together. And it's big, but we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna try to get it in here. So, just using it on this side of the face and hopefully you all can see a difference. If not, I'm sorry. <laughs> So looking at my this side of my face compared to this side, let me know if you see a difference in using dim light. Um, the it, It's just so subtle, but like I said, for me, I notice the difference when I'm under lights or, you know, I take a picture and I'm just like, wow, like I just look really nice in that picture. Like just really almost angelic, like <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna finish off my makeup, come back, show you some comparisons between the other ambient lighting palette that I have, and then we'll be done with this video, so stay tuned. Okay, so I finished off this eye look with some mascara. I am wearing the Gucci mascara, and I did spray my face with the Hourglass Veil spray. So I think overall, my face looks so nice and put together. I think one thing that I really do enjoy about the Hourglass powders is that they're so effortless on the skin, and they're not meant to, you know, add tons of uh, pigment. They're not meant to be like in your face. They're really there to enhance the features of your face, to give your face a beautiful glow and to just help you look, like I said, overall flawless. And I think that's what these powders do. Of course, you know, if I'm going in with my critiques on the palette, I mentioned it before, but I just wish that Hourglass would realize there is a complete market for your palette in tan, medium, and deep complexions. And this is not cutting it. I think this is nice. I am thankful that there is a bronzer in here that will work for me. But I feel like if you, if you, even if you're a shade deeper than me, you might not even be able to wear this bronzer as a bronzer. Vicky J did a video 
Um, if you don't know her, you need to follow her ASAPery. I will link her channel down below, but she did review the Ambient Unlocked Mini Palette. And so definitely check her out. She wears um, Caledonia in the NARS Soft Matte Foundation just to give you kind of a shade reference as to where she stands. And she wasn't able to use this bronzer shade as a bronzer. Um, she's able to use it and I'll let you go watch her video so you can hear her thoughts on it. But it wasn't in the intended purpose of the palette. And same with this one. I think if you are, you know, maybe a shade deeper than me, maybe this bronzer will work for you. But any deeper, it's not going to work for you. The blush and the, the um, blushes might be able to work for, you know, deeper complexions depending on how they want to use it. Um, I definitely could see this blush on a deeper complexion as a highlighter. Maybe also mood exposure depending on your undertone. But once again, you're spending $80 or even $58 on a palette that you're not going to be able to use it in the sense and of how it was created to be used. So anyone from Hourglass, if you're watching this, please do yourselves a favor and really start thinking of everyone. And like I said, come out with two or three of these palettes and that way you can formulate it the way that you want to formulate it. You can have the colors that you want to have it. Um, and then, you know, more people can get use out of them because I do feel like Hourglass is an amazing brand and I feel like their powders are just impeccable. I know that Hourglass sells their bronzers and deeper shades individually, but when they, when it comes to these palettes, Hourglass never includes shades or never creates a palette that will be deep enough for deeper complexions. Shoot, not even deeper complexions, you know, tan to deep complexions. I feel like this palette, out of all of the ones that I've seen, and then the one that I do have, this is the deepest bronzer that has been in any of them. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't have all of them. Um, so that's, if I could say, those are my, you know, gripes with this palette, um, or with these palettes. It's just the inclusivity that's not there. Now, if you are fine with using the palettes, like let's say you're like, look, I just love the shades. I'll know I'll just use them as highlighters then by all means, I do recommend the products. They're beautiful, not gonna lie. I really do recommend them based on their performance. Um, like I said, I'm very happy that I can finally take one of these with me and actually use blush, bronzer, and highlight because it actually has a bronzer in here that will show up on my complexion. Um, the so I, so I do recommend both of the palettes. I'm very happy that I have both because I think both of them complement each other very well. And seeing both sides on my face, I really do enjoy both sides. If I had to choose one, if you guys know me, you should know I'm going with this one. Only because I really love this blush shade. It's beautiful. And two, I like the bronzer in this particular palette better. Um, and you know, you're getting more product here. But if you're like, I'm not gonna spend $80, but you know, do you recommend this one? Then I do. Like I said, I purchased this one before and the only reason why I took it back was because I felt like I spent too much money and I wasn't using enough of the shades to make it seem well for me to feel like I was getting my money's worth. I feel like I'll definitely get my money's worth with this one. Less shades and the shades that I like are actually in this palette. Um, and I think it looks beautiful on the skin as well. The bronzer shade, I can use it technically, but if I'm being honest, I will probably use this as a bronzer topper and I will use another bronzer underneath to see more of a bronze look. Whereas with this particular palette, I feel like the bronzer shade shows up just enough to where I don't feel like I need another bronzer. And you guys, of course, tell me what you see because I won't know what you see until I edit it. But based on just what I think, what I see in the mirror, I'm liking this side of my face over this side. Okay, now on to my little comparison. I only have one other Hourglass palette. This is a palette, I think this one came out 16 or 17. One of those years, this one came out. It must be 16 if this has been out for three years now. So 16, and this is the bronzer here. So I'm gonna show these two side by side. So this is the Ambient Lighting Sculpted up top, and this is the Ambient Lighting Volume 3 at the bottom. And as you can see, I've definitely loved on this palette. I love the blush shades in here. Um, and the highlighter in this palette is very subtle. The bronzer shade, I can only use it as a bronzer topper because it's just not deep enough to show up on my skin as a bronzer alone. So in this particular one, the volume three, we have the same diffused light and dim light powder. So we have 
um, dim light right here and diffuse light right here. The first shade that I'm gonna swatch is the strobe shade from Edit Volume 3. And we're gonna compare it to the strobe shade in this one and also the unlocked one. Edit Volume 3 strobe highlighter. And then we have the um, strobe highlighter ambient sculpture palette. And then we have the strobe highlighter in unlocked. So as you can see, hopefully you can see all three of these strobe, lighter, strobe highlighters are different um, with, I feel the unlocked one giving us the most bang in terms of intensity of highlighter. Um, and then seeing the shades swatch next to each other, you can definitely see the differences of the two highlighters. This is from the sculpted one and this is from the unlocked one. Um, on the skin or on my face, they looked more similar, but seeing them swatch, you can see the differences of the two. So we have the um, Ambient Volume 3 bronzer. Then we have Ambient Sculpture bronzer. And then we have Ambient um, Mini Edit Unlocked. And so those are the three bronzer shades. So Volume 3, Sculpted, Sculptor, sculpted uh, palette and then unlocked. So as you can see of the three, the, the ambient edit sculptured palette is definitely a little deeper than these two as well. So here is the blush shade, that purplish mauve blush shade from ed, um, edit volume three. Then we have from ambient sculptured and then we have from unlocked. So these are the three blush shades. And the tones are different, but they, they're all, you know, in the mauve family. Um, with the ambient unlocked being the deeper of the three. And then we have the last two blush shades. So this is going to be the lighter blush shade from Edit 3 and the blush shade from Sculptured. And so looking at those two, they do look a little similar, but you do see some slight differences between the two. I feel like this shade from the Ambient Sculptured palette has a little bit more coral to it versus this one has a little bit more pink to it. <laughs> but those are my thoughts, guys. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. I'd love to hear if you're gonna pick it up. What do you think of the two palettes? If you do have deeper complexions, like I said, check out Vicky J's video to see if at least the Ambient Unlocked palette will work for you. And then if you have the other palette and if you are of a deeper complexion, leave a comment down below so I can pin it so that those of us who would like to know if it's even worth your dollars can at least have some type of reference. And guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to see you, yeah you, in my very next video. Bye guys.